welcome to Go Keys College. Today, we are going to be talking about improvisation. Welcome, welcome to improvisation. Improvisation is all about a language. You got to look at your keyboard as a language, as a platform to speak to others. 
you could look at it as a tool to convey the language that you wish to speak. For example, the dog jumped on the table. I could say it in a different way. I could say the dog jumped on the table and I could say made a mess. I could say the dog took a nap. I could say the ferocious pit bull leapt over the fence and latched on tight to the thief. I could say the journey was very relaxing. see it's all about having an idea and conveying that idea and sometimes it might not even be a sentence it may not even be a concept that you put in words but it could be an emotion you're trying to convey let me give you another example so if I wanted to convey some sort of really sublime, relaxed emotion. I would use one of my favorite EPs on this keyboard, such as the Pure EP1. I like that one. So, watch how I convey the emotion. I'm going to give you the blueprint for how I do this. I think about what I want to convey and I choose the appropriate chordal structures to do so. I also must choose the right instrument. That's more like it. Get in there. That's more like it. So that's not bad, but I like the pure EP for what I want to do right now. Now, I think of a concept. The baby stages of improvisation start off with you having some idea, okay? The early stages, you could have an idea of what you may want to play or the scales you may want to play. So I might think, oh, I'm going to play uh, the pentatonic scale on A minor. <laughs> I could even plan the notes. And I could think of the chords that might go with this and I could play. But as time goes on, one has got to leave these crutches. I call them crutches. A crutch means you already have an idea of what you're gonna do. The scales you'll play and uh, somewhat the arrangement. But to, to transcend that, after doing that for a while, you know, it really depends on one's development. Some people do that all the time. They play the same safe scale. Same safe scale all the time. 
But as time goes on, you must evolve by listening more and taking risks. And the more you listen, the more you're able to put what you're doing in context. When I met Chick Corea at Cabot Hall, he said, if it sounds good, then play it. So how do you know it's gonna sound good? Ah, you must know your instrument. You must know what will likely sound good. And the more you do it, the more you know that thing sounds good. So without thinking, even with my eyes closed, I know what sounds good. You see how I am already able to position my hands and my eyes are closed at this point, but I know whatever I play sounds good because it's become muscle memory. It sounds good. Then when I add my right hand to it, how do I know it's gonna sound good? Let's go to the arranger and you can take a look at the chords because these are actual chords, but they're not rehearsed. It comes from knowing your instrument. Take a look at this. Not rehearsed, eyes closed. Eyes closed. So you need to be familiar with your instrument. You need to know what could possibly sound good and what could possibly sound unpleasant. Stay away from that. The more you play, the more you'll be able to target accurately and play what is in your head and what you're feeling. And it comes from knowing the instrument, playing it over and over and over again, knowing beyond chords, knowing how to talk. It's a language. It's a language. A lot of times I improvise, I may start off with my eyes closed because I know that with my eyes closed, I'm getting a purer interpretation of what I might be thinking or feeling at the time. And as time goes on, I might choose to open my eyes and I might not. There are times when you may actually have a chordal arrangement in mind, but what you're gonna play on top of it is improvised. For example, I could just go between a, you know, a C seventh and an F seventh. And what I play over this, it, it really depends on how I'm feeling at that time. So it really depends. And other times you could do what I call blowing up the bridge. Blowing up the bridge means just forget everything else. So let me show you an example. I'm gonna call this piece Tranquility and I'm just gonna show you how I would think of that. So sometimes you could even think of a note to start on. Let's say you think of a C sharp and that becomes the beginning but I'm gonna show you how I build on this. So I choose a known thing, C sharp, and I have tranquility at the back of my mind, but how the improvisation unfolds depends 
on where I steer it. So let's have a little improvisation right now.
And that is an example of improvisation, unrehearsed, keyless. And, you know, sometimes you could have a key as a root, but I had absolutely no key. And I'm glad you were able to see the chords to see that there's really not a need to have a key per se. You know, when I met Chick, I asked, is it about scales? Is it about, and he said, no, it's not about that. You just have to play what you're feeling, what is coming to you. It's not about cramming scales and chords, but it's about speaking a language, speaking a language. You should be able to speak your language at any time. It's like you're from the tribe of piano, the tribe of piano. Everyone who is in the tribe of piano can speak piano. And we all have different dialects, but what is your dialect? Are you able to speak uninhibited? Or do you feel like you have an impediment, a piano speech impediment? And you know, if you do, the more you speak, the more you'll be able to improvise clearly. So for those who are wondering, well, there's got to be something to it. There really is a lot of practice of scales. Those are just major scales. So you need to have those in your repertoire for expression. But you see, I didn't even run a whole lot of scales in my improvisation. It's not always about that. For me, the common sense is for the black notes, I'm not going to attempt using my thumb. I'm just going to use these, right? I rarely use my pinky when running scales on these black keys. I could use my pinky more here and my thumb more down here. But these three, I found myself using them more up here. And they almost all have identities like these two are these and these three are these. And when I'm coming down, it's either going to be one of those and I'm coming down. It could be something else, depending on what I'm running. I could choose to run a major seven flatted fifth scale. So let's go over here so you can see what I'm saying. So this is a C sharp major seven flatted fifth. And I could run the scale like this. See that? So there are things in my repertoire that I can use to express myself. The same way you've got vocabulary in your head about the language, like you know, if you speak English, boy, girl, mom, dad, street, carpet, chair, you know what to call things. The same way in improvisation, you should know a number of words, you know. So for me, like I'm thinking, you can see, what a horrendous chord. F sharp, major ninth, sharp nine, sharp 11, 13. Couldn't care less about the name, it's the feel. And if I go for a chord, see that? I just know the effect it's gonna give me, but I don't really care for the name. You get to a point where you gotta lose the concern about the name, and that comes from a lot of practice. You gotta lose the name and know the effect, the impact. So, so if I'm on a minor key like C minor, I know what going to F minor will do, and 
G minor and back to C minor but I could also get some other effects without thinking if I want to cause a lot of tension while I'm on C minor I know what to do don't know what those chords are, but I know the impact. That's familiar. This is not. Neither is this. This is, that is, that is, and that's a note with the third major. Gives a very nice feel. A lot of tension and mixed emotions in that one. But I know how to create the tensions. And I know how to cause the relaxation effect. So let's say we're on C minor. I want a relaxed effect that takes you outside. And I know what to do for that. There's so many ways of achieving that. But I'll do just one of the many ways. It's my major seventh expansions. Let's go. Those are just major sevenths, but I know how to work them. Note, I'm not playing just that. I'm playing something different, right? I'm using some ninth in there. I'm using some additional notes that I know will give me what I need. And some clusters. Clusters are a great way of you creating those tensions. All those are just emotions. And those emotions are, I'm happy to be playing piano. That's all it, that's saying. any questions and hit like and subscribe. I'm going to take you out with a little bit of jazz. So let's try some big band. <laughs>
Thank you for joining me, my friends. Hit like and subscribe.